right, good morning. I believe we're on day 21. So as I just mentioned, we're gonna lay down today for this meditation. So begin to find your Shavasana pose, corpse pose on your back. And while you're doing that, I will um, talk to you for a moment about what Yoga Nidra is. Many of you have heard the term Yoga Nidra. So Nidra means sleep, roughly, roughly speaking. Some people say Nidra. Um, I've heard many Sanskrit scholars pronounce it Nidra, but I'm sure you can say it either way. It's acceptable. Yoga Nidra. Conscious sleep. And it's a type of meditation. The idea is to consciously relax the body. It's different than meditation because in a seated meditative pose, the physical body is relatively active. Now, of course, we're relaxed, but you're relatively active because you're sitting upright and we're consciously breathing and seated meditation is either guided or of course unguided. Yoga Nidra is recommended to be on your back always and it's recommended that it's guided. It's The idea is to take away as much of your effort as possible for the purpose of transcendence from physical. Yoga Nidra systematically works with relax, relaxing the different levels of our being, the koshas. Of course, the physical kosha, your energetic body, mental and emotional body, and of course, the higher bodies. The idea is to re consciously relax them and then optimize them so consciousness can transcend all the koshas, the jivatma, the individual spirit, and then merging with paramatma, the oversoul. So the, there are several teachings on yoga nidra. One that I love, actually there are two, I'm gonna show you one today is this book called Enlightenment Without God. Now, don't let that title scare you, um, by Swami Rama. So this is the, Sw Swami Rama was the founder of the Himalayan Institute. So this book, Enlightenment Without God, is a commentary on the Mandukya Upanishad, one of the ancient Hin um, Indian texts. And in the Mandukya Upanishad, it talks about the four states of consciousness that we as humans are capable of, of experiencing. The first state of which is referred to as Jagrat, and that's normal waking consciousness that ma the majority of us spend 99% of our existence in when we're not sleeping, Jagrat. And then we have Svapna, which is dreaming, the state of dreaming. Now, dreaming is largely involuntary. Yes, we can learn to control our dreams and guide them, but for the most part, dreaming, dreaming is de-emphasized in, in the Mandukya Upanishad. De-emphasized, meaning don't place a lot of importance on the dreams. They're described as random discharging of emotional energy. And then we have Sushupti, which is dreamless sleep. Now, dreamless sleep is interesting because we're not aware of it. However, there is activity going on in our higher self. And then we have Turiya which literally translates to the fourth. Turiya means the fourth state of consciousness, which is super consciousness. It's similar in nature to the higher levels of samadhi and also the state after which kundalini has awoken. So jagrat, waking consciousness, svapna, dreaming sleep, sushupti, dreamless sleep, and turiya. So the Mandukya Upanishad teaches us that when we can consciously move through these four states, consciously, that's where enlightenment occurs. And the practice prescribed is Yoga Nidra. Consciously relaxing the body, consciously being aware of the four states, being aware of dreamless sleep, being aware of dreaming, and then of course being aware of Turiya, the fourth. Wow, so many beautiful teachings that come out of ancient India. So I hope that you found your laying down Shavasana pose. Okay, so laying on your back, let's move into our Yoga Nidra practice. All right, so on your back, feet are a little bit wider than your hips. Arms are by your side, preferably palms facing up. Get comfortable and be sure to support the cervical spine if you need to. You can, of course, lay on a pillow or something soft and supportive. 
make any final adjustments that you need to be still. We, we don't want to have to move or fidget for the next nine minutes. Okay? So once you've laid down and you become still, start to breathe. Now the goal of Yoga Nidra is not to snore, even though that happens to me sometimes. So we want to do our best to stay awake until we learn the practice at a deep enough level to not have to try and the consciousness will hover between a state of actual snoring sleep and yogic sleep. So sometimes you'll wake yourself up when you start to <coughs> snore a little bit. And I'll give you a technique next time for staying awake. But for now, just begin to breathe deeply. Let's take a deep inhale together. Fill the lungs up. Open the mouth, exhale. Again, do it slower this time. Breathe in slowly, slowly. Hold the breath. And then exhale completely and slowly, feeling your body begin to melt into the earth, into the couch or bed or cushion, whatever you're resting on. And become still. Allow the lips to be slightly parted. The tongue is off the roof of the mouth. Eyelids are gently meeting each other. And just witness the body breathing for a moment. This is now involuntary breathing. Just notice the body naturally taking in the right amount of air and naturally exhaling the perfect amount of air for you. The first stage of today's yoga nidra practice is called the pairs of opposites. So while laying on your back in corpse pose, Shavasana, I would just like you to become aware of your left hand. Just put your awareness in your left hand. And then notice your right hand. No judgment, no thought, just be aware. And then notice your left forearm and your right forearm. Left shoulder and right shoulder. Place your awareness into your left foot. and your right foot, your left calf, and your right calf, your left hip, and right hip. Left side of your chest, and right side of your chest. Become aware of your left ear and right ear. Left nostril, right nostril. The left eyeball, the right eyeball left eyelid and right eyelid. Just move your awareness, no dwelling, no extraneous thoughts about each body part. Just be aware and then move. The entire left side of your body and the entire right side of your body. Become aware of the waist to the crown of the head. And now from the waist down to the tips of the toes. Develop awareness of the front side of your body. And the back side.
now see yourself as one whole. Complete awareness of the body as a whole, harmonious, yin and yang combined, integrated. And now return to the witness of your breath. Don't shape the breath. Just watch the breath as an observer as an investigator, as a silent watcher. You are not the breather. You are the one who is aware of the body breathing. Now that we've worked with the physical kosha, let's work with the pranic kosha our energy body. With your mind, develop awareness of the tips of the toes to the crown of the head. And notice that there are two lines of energy that run up the legs and they converge at the base of the spine. And then that line of energy up the spine runs the length of the spine to the top of the head. So two lines of energy in the legs converging at the coccyx and then running up the coccyx as one channel to the top of the head. Use these channels to move energy with the natural breathing of your body. When you see your body inhale, move awareness from tips of toes up the two channels of the legs merging at the base of the spine and up the spine to the top of the head. That's the inhale. And the exhale is the same movement going down, retracing that path, those paths down to the tips of the toes. Inhale up and exhale down. Very subtle. Very smooth. You rise from toes up the legs, merging at the spine to the top of the head. Exhale is back down. Just another 30 seconds or so. Okay, please relax this technique. still. Sense your physical body and your energetic body in a complete state of optimization and heightened harmony. Take a deep inhale, breathe in all the way. Open the mouth, let it go. Feel free to remain in Shavasana for as long as you'd like and just be still, contemplating the different layers and levels of your being and how you can harmonize them so you can be more effective in your waking state. Namaste.